Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our nephrology playlist. In the last video, we started talking about acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. In the blood, there is uremia. In the blood, there is azotemia. In the blood, there is hyperkeratinemia. In the urine, there is hypovolemia. And the glomerular filtration rate is toast. I've told you before that acute renal failure has three types and three stages. Pre-renal, before the kidney. Renal or intrarenal, the problem is inside the kidney or post-renal, the problem started after the kidney. Look at this, uremic facies, and I might find uremic frosting on the skin. Please watch the videos in my nephrology playlist in order, as well as these specific videos from my lab's playlist. Let's keep it simple, back to basics. Here's computer science. There's an input, processing unit, followed by an output. What's the input to the kidney? Renal artery. What's the processing unit? The kidney itself. And what's the output? Ureter, bladder, urethra. Which means if the problem is here, less blood is reaching the kidney, it's called pre-renal renal failure or pre-renal kidney injury or pre-renal azotemia. If the problem started in the kidney itself, it's called intrarenal azotemia. But if the problem started after the kidney, i.e. in the ureter, bladder, urethra, etc., it's called post-renal kidney injury. Your kidney has gazillion functions, one of which is to get rid of waste products like urea and creatinine. And that's why kidney failure is not fun, because it's the job of the kidney to get rid of the urea by excreting it into the urine. But if the kidney has failed, what's going to happen? Urea will pile up in your blood because the kidney cannot excrete it anymore and this is called uremia and since urea is made of nitrogen and the word for nitrogen is azot we call this disease azotemia with that in mind you are ready to answer the question of the previous video in cases of hepatorenal syndrome which is a kidney disease caused by a liver disease the serum bon might actually be normal what the what how come Easy. Remember, ammonia is made by amino acid metabolism, and then the liver will convert the ammonia into urea, and then the kidney should excrete that urea. Now I have a disease called hepaterenal. The kidney is toast because the liver was toast in the first place. Kidney failure alone should raise the urea, but liver failure should lower the urea. Why would kidney failure increase the urea? Because there is no one to excrete the urea. Why would liver failure lower the urea? Because there is no one to produce the urea. From 1 and 2, we can actually deduce that the serum BUN might be normal. And that's how you become a good doctor, not another doofus with a stethoscope. Acute renal failure is the same as acute kidney injury, is the same as acute renal insufficiency or acute renal azotemia. Why acute? Because there is a rapid deterioration of kidney function within days or weeks. Why do you call it injury? Because for the most part, it is reversible. We compared between acute renal failure and chronic renal failure in the previous video. Please pause and review. Remember that acute kidney injury could be pre-renal, intrarenal, or post-renal. If my kidney is toast, serum creatinine will go up because there is no one to excrete it. And my serum blood urea nitrogen will also go up because there is no one to excrete it. What's the normal BUN level in the blood? Less than 18 milligrams per deciliter. And what's the normal creatinine in the blood? Less than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Let's say that the average serum BUN is 15 and the average serum creatinine is 1. If I do the BUN to creatinine ratio, 15 to 1 or 15 over 1, you get 15. Also remember that the BUN is partially reabsorbed because the kidney needs that urea to concentrate the urine. So some of that urea is reabsorbed back from the tubule to the interstitium. But serum creatinine is total waste. We gotta excrete it. If BUN is 15 and creatinine is 1, then the ratio is 15 or higher. A normal kidney should reabsorb urea, but not creatinine. That's why the ratio is higher than 1, and that's why the higher, the better. 
If I have kidney failure, I have accumulation of urea in the blood, uremia. Lots of these waste products are acidic, uremic acidosis. Urea is made of nitrogen, azotemia. GFR is toast, urine volume is toast, BUN and creatinine are high in the blood, which means low in the urine. When my kidney fails, all of these toxins accumulate in the blood, adding to the unmeasured anions. See what happens to the unmeasured anions here? They increased. And therefore, the anion gap, which is the difference between the unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations, or this lovely square right here, will enlarge. And you call this high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Acute kidney injury, three causes, three stages. Three causes, pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. Which one is the most common? Pre-renal for sure. Let's talk about intra-renal. What's the cause? Could be a problem in the glomerulus, could be a problem in the tubule, or could be a problem in the interstitium. And sometimes the problem is in the renal vessels. But I just wanted to keep everything in three. And then what are the causes of tubular diseases here? Hypoxic or toxic? I'm not receiving enough blood or I'm being hammered by a freaking toxin, which could be a drug, a heavy metal, or a radio contrast dye. As for the three stages, they are initiation, maintenance, and recovery. What makes a good kidney good? That the serum BON is normal, kept below 18. Serum creatinine is normal, kept below 1. 1.2. BON to creatinine ratio is kept above 15. A good kidney does not waste sodium in the urine. Sodium is precious for your body. So the fractional excretion of sodium should be less than 1%. A good kidney is not wasting sodium in the urine. So the urine sodium is less than 20 milli equivalents per liter. A good kidney is capable of concentrating the urine. So the urine osmolarity is high, greater than 15. And the urine volume should be between 1 and 2 liters per day. For sure higher than 500 milliliters per day. Now let's talk about pre-renal azotemia. I'm not receiving enough oxygen because I'm not receiving enough blood. Versus renal azotemia. I am not receiving enough blood. Hypoxic. Or I'm being hammered by a toxin. Toxic. Post-renal, usually caused by an obstruction of the outflow. It's a gentle reminder that acute kidney injury might have oliguria, less than 400 or less than 500 ml of urine per day. It could even be anuria, no urine, but it doesn't have to. Some people have acute kidney injury with normal urine volume, believe it or not. All of that gunk is piling up in my blood. Sepsis or septic shock is a common cause. Hypovolemic shock is another common cause. Pre-renal, renal or post-renal. Pre-renal, blame the renal artery for not bringing enough blood to the kidney. Post-renal, blame the outflow tracts for not draining the urine from the kidney. And intrarenal, blame the glomerulus or the tubule or the interstitium or the renal vessels. Acute renal failure is azotemia, high BUN and creatinine, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis. Causes are three, pre-renal, intrarenal, post-renal. Pre-renal, do not forget the song, no BP, no PP. If your blood pressure is low, you will perfuse the kidney less and you will produce less urine. No BP, no PP. So therefore, any cause of extracellular fluid volume depletion will decrease my blood pressure, which decreases the renal artery perfusion and the kidney will suffer. This is pre-renal azotemia. Because anytime the renal blood flow decreases, the GFR will go down. Examples, congestive heart failure. What if I lost too much blood, hypovolemic shock after a hemorrhage, or third degree burn, where I lose plasma and plasma proteins, like albumin, or over diuresis, because I am a doofus who took too many diuretic drugs or because my doctor is the real doofus who gave me too many diuretics. It's not just hypovolemic shock. Septic shock can also do it. Because remember what's the definition of shock in the first place? Inadequate tissue perfusion. There you go. What else? Some drugs decrease kidney perfusion, such as NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. Regardless of the cause of pre-renal azotemia, GFR decreases and is decreasing. And if you do not treat it early, it's gonna become intrarenal soon, particularly the high 
hypoxic or ischemic type. Azotemia for sure and oliguria. Still, the kidney is fine. The renal artery is doofus for not bringing enough blood. But the kidney is still functioning, so it's a good kidney. The BU to creatinine ratio is greater than 15. Fraction excretion of sodium is less than 1%, which means the kidney is losing less than 1% of its sodium, which is amazing. Urine osmolality is higher than 500 because a good kidney is capable of concentrating your urine. But then if this is not treated early because the doctor has his head stuck all the way up his sigmoid colon, this will turn to become intrarenal azotemia, which is going to be the topic of the next video in this nephrology playlist. Let's do it again. Pre-renal azotemia. No BP, no PP. The patient has history of extracellular fluid volume depletion, which lowered the blood pressure, which decreased the blood flow to the kidney. That's why we call it pre-renal. GFR is low. Causes include hypovolemic shock, whether due to hemorrhage, third-degree burn, overdiuresis, severe vomiting, or diarrhea. Septic shock. The definition of shock is inadequate tissue perfusion. CHF. But hey, medicosis, I thought that CHF is volume overload. Yeah, it's volume overload, but where is all the volume? In the interstitial fluid. In my ankle edema, not inside the vessel. The definition of edema is accumulation of fluid, not in the vessel, but in the interstitial space. Is the interstitial space the space that will actually perfuse your kidney? No, it's the intravascular compartment that will perfuse your kidney. Next, medications like NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, and ARBs because they decrease glomerular perfusion. Symptoms of kidney failure in general are fatigue, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, don't forget the itching. What are the symptoms of volume depletion? The patient will feel dirt in my eyes. I'm so thirsty, I am dizzy, I'm tired, and I fainted. Syncope. Physical exam. The signs of volume depletion include dry skin, sunken fontanelles in neonates, poor skin turgor, i.e. skin tenting, hypotension, reflex tachycardia, because of the hypotension, and orthostatic hypotension. When I stand up, my blood pressure decreases significantly because I have no volume inside the artery. My effective arterial blood volume is low. How can we diagnose it? GFR is low. We have azotemia in the serum, elevated BON and creatinine levels, oliguria or even anuria, but it does not have to be there. As long as it's still pre-renal, we consider this a good kidney. The ratio is fine, FENA is fine, urine osmolality is fine, which means the kidney is able to concentrate the urine. Management. We divide patients with pre-renal azotemia into volume responsive versus volume resistant. Those who responded to the volume that we gave and those patients who did not. What else in medicine is divided into saline responsive and saline resistant? If you say metabolic alkalosis, you are an excellent student. I have talked about the topic of saline responsive versus saline resistant metabolic alkalosis in my acid base course, which you can download here. Why are you trying to give fluid? To correct the underlying problem, because the underlying problem is hypoperfusion. That's why we give fluid. When everything hits the fan, dialysis, of course, because this is azotemia. Accumulation of waste products in the blood. Dialysis will clean your blood out. What if there is CHF? Reduce the afterload. What if there is septic shock? Give antibiotics. Intravenously, of course, not orally. What if it's third degree burn? Wait until 24 hours have passed and give albumin. How about the first 24 hours? You give normal saline. Why not albumin in the first day? Because albumin will leak through the burned skin and all the albumin that you give in the first day will end up in the bed sheets because it will ooze and leak through the patient's skin which is pointless so wait until the first 24 hours have elapsed 
and then give the albumin. You can learn more about the normal kidney function, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule by downloading my kidney physiology course on my website. To learn about acute obstructive pyelonephritis, hypospadias, epispadias, prostatitis, quick review of renal tumors, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about the serum anion gap, the serum a smaller gap, the urine anion gap, base excess, base deficit, compensated, uncompensated, etc., download my acid base imbalance course. Get instant access to more than 300 premium videos here on YouTube by clicking the join button below this video. Please subscribe and hit the bell, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.